Well, hello to my Sunday school friends. It is really nice to see you. We're talking, remember, about Samuel. Last time we got together, we remembered how God gave Samuel's mom, Hannah, the answer to all her prayers, that she wanted to have a little boy so desperately. She couldn't have any babies, and she was so sad and so, so broken up about it that she prayed that God would give her a son, and she promised God, if you give me a son, I will give him back to you. Which is a strange thing, right? But that's what happened. That when Samuel was about four years old, he went to live in the temple. He went to live with Eli, the old priest. And he stayed there and he helped in the temple. He slept in the temple, in the room where the Ark of the Covenant was. Remember the Ark of the Covenant? That's that box that was made that has the Ten Commandments in it. It was part of the tabernacle that went through the, the wilderness with, with Israel. You remember it if you don't. You should look back at some of those stories. At any rate, Samuel lived in the temple. Now, Eli was old and he was going blind. It was hard for him to see. And most of the priest work was done by his two sons. And I am very sad to tell you that they were very naughty men that they did all kinds of bad and wicked things, that they stole from the people who came to make offerings to God, that they hurt the people who came to make offerings to God, that they took advantage of them. They just were very, very bad men. And God sent warnings to Eli that this was not going to be allowed, that this was not cool, that he had to get his sons under control, that he had to do a better job as a dad. But Eli didn't. And those boys, continue, those men, continued to be very, very wicked. And Samuel continued to grow up in the middle of that. But somehow Samuel kept himself together and he loved God. And people began to think really well of him. And people began to notice him. And, and he was a good boy. Now, one day uh, Samuel was, was sleeping like he always did in the temple. And, and in this time in history, God's visions didn't appear to people very often. They were kind of rare. Uh, that it's sort of like it is now. That, that God is, is silent, speaks through his word, right? But, but there's not a lot of whole uh, visions, you know, where God appears to someone and says, hey, do this thing. Uh, you know, like we've talked about happened to Abraham. And we've talked a lot about it. At any rate, Samuel was, was sleeping in the, in the temple, in the room with the Ark of the Covenant. And all of a sudden, the Lord spoke to him. The Lord said, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel heard this voice, but he didn't think that the Lord was speaking to him. He thought Eli was calling him. So he got up and he ran to Eli's room and he said, here I am. What do you need? And Eli said, I, I, didn't, I didn't call you. What's the matter with you, crazy kid? Go back to bed. I, I was sleeping here. So Samuel was very puzzled, but he went back and he lay down again. And a few minutes later, the Lord spoke to Samuel again. Samuel, Samuel. Samuel popped up, ran to Eli's room. Yes, what do you need? I heard you calling me again. And Eli said, I didn't call you. I don't know what you're doing. Go back to bed. So Samuel went back and lay down again. And a few minutes later, God again spoke to him. Samuel, Samuel. Samuel popped up, ran to Eli. Yes, I heard you again, master. What is it that you want from me? And Eli finally figured out what was going on. And he said, no, 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 it's not me that's calling you. It must be the Lord. So if, if the Lord calls you again, don't come to me. Don't pop up. Just say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And Samuel thought, okay, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. I mean, this is something you want to get right. So Samuel went back and he laid down. And sure enough, the Lord called to him the fourth time, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And the Lord spoke to Samuel that night. The Lord told him that he'd been watching what was going on in that temple. And he was watching those two bad sons of Eli. And he wanted, the Lord wanted Samuel to know that he was going to take away the priesthood from Eli and from his family. And that they weren't going to be allowed to be priests anymore, but that God would would uh, and would God would not not forgive them. There was no sacrifice they could do. There was no apology they could do that. That that ship had sailed. It was over. It was done. They'd ignored all the warnings. And, and now it's judgment time. And then the Lord let Samuel try to go back to sleep. But Samuel, of course, 
that's an awful lot to lay on a little kid. And Samuel just lay there all night long, worried about what he'd have to say to Eli, because you know Eli is going to ask him questions in the morning, right? Well, sure enough, the morning came and Eli called Samuel and Samuel walked to Eli with a heavy heart and, and heavy feet. And Eli said, please tell me what the Lord had to say and don't leave anything out. If you leave anything out, that's like lying. And may God do to you and worse whatever it was that God has, has given you as a message. So Samuel took a deep breath and he told Eli everything. You know, that God was upset and that there was not going to be any forgiveness anymore offered, that, that Eli and his sons had crossed a line, and that the priesthood was going to be taken away from them, and they were going to be replaced with somebody else. And Samuel told Eli the whole thing. He didn't leave anything out. He didn't lie. He didn't shade anything. He didn't exaggerate anything. He just told Eli what God said. And when he was done, Eli took a deep breath, and Eli said, Well, it's the Lord after all. Let him do what seems good to him, which is really a beautiful thing for a person to say who's made all these mistakes, who's, who's committed all these sins and all these failures and not been the dad he should have been and not been the priest he should have been. For him to hear say, you know, it's, it's up to God. Well, that, that's a beautiful thing. And, and, you know, the priesthood's taken away from Eli, but I pray that God rescued and redeemed him as a, as a man, as a person, uh, in part because of his openness to God's will, you know, that God is, is a good and grace, graceful God. So I pray that, that, that God rescued Eli and God continued to love Eli, even though the punishment was absolutely set in stone, that Eli and his family lost the priesthood. We're going to talk about that the next time we get together. All right. So you take care. You think about a little boy getting called by God in the middle of the night and how God trusted this little boy with a really important message. You know, God's given you really important messages, too, that Jesus is alive, that people's sins can be forgiven, that there's nothing that you can do to make God stop loving you. All those messages have been given to you, no matter how old or young you are. And God trusts you to live with those messages and to pass them on faithfully and to tell the truth when people ask you and to grow like Samuel did in grace and in truth, having people notice that you are following Jesus' footsteps. You take care. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.